The movie begins by introducing Mike Wade, once a legendary MMA fighter. However, the prime of his career was long gone, and a serious shoulder injury kept him out of the ring. His days in the spotlight have become rare. On a crucial day, Mike confronted his former manager and asked him to facilitate his return to the wrestling arena. But he disagreed, saying age and a shoulder injury were insurmountable obstacles. Despite this refusal, financial desperation led Mike to persist and ask the manager to help him. Frustrated with the lack of support from his manager, Mike decided to prove his worth by challenging another fighter. At first, Mike dominated the fight, but exhaustion took its toll, allowing his opponent to claim the victory and mark the downfall of the legendary MMA fighter. After this defeat, Mike had to accept that his abilities were diminished in the competitive world of wrestling. With a precarious financial situation and the inability to cover his rent, he was forced to give up his boxing gloves, symbolizing his decision to retire from fighting in search of alternative employment. Mike found a job in construction, participating in the Castle High Hospital evacuation project. The scene then shifts to a middle-aged man named Richard Erickson, who cares for his daughter Emily, suffering from leukemia and bedridden. Shortly after, a woman approached Richard to demand payment for Emily's in-home care during her treatment. Regrettably, Richard lacked the funds to meet the fees. A call from the hospital delivered the grim news that Emily needed chemotherapy once more, requiring $400,000 for medical expenses, given that his health insurance had been depleted by prior bills. Richard, exasperated by his predicament, pondered how to secure the funds for Emily's treatment. The scene transitions to a federal prison, where a black inmate named Lando is locked in a dispute with another prisoner, Damien, regarding the location of hidden money. A violent altercation ensues, with Damien and his henchmen attacking Lando, while a prison warden looks on in silence. The story then circles back to Mike, lost in thoughts about his drastic life change, shifting from a legendary MMA fighter to a low-paid construction worker. His employer reprimands him for neglecting his duties and underscores the looming deadline for the Castle High Hospital demolition. Simultaneously, the mayor addresses reporters, announcing the imminent eviction of Castle High Hospital to make way for a new sports facility. In his prison cell, Lando is stunned to learn about the hospital's eviction while watching television. He requests a meeting with the chief warden, who turns out to be Richard. Lando promptly asks Richard to transfer him to the southern prison block, offering to fund his daughter's treatment. Mentioning Emily's plight infuriates Richard, leading to a physical confrontation. The next morning, Richard secretly approaches Lando, inquiring about the hidden money, as he desperately needs the funds. Lando confesses to robbing Damien of $3 million and stashing it in Castle High Hospital, which is on the brink of demolition. Lando offers to help Richard secure the money for his daughter's treatment in exchange for the transfer to the Southern Block. Richard accepts the proposition, but a prison warden, connected to Damien, catches wind of Richard's plan to move Lando to the Southern Block, suspecting that he's after the hidden money. Learning of this, Damien reaches out to his brother, Deacon, who now oversees Damien's drug operation while he's behind bars. During a break, Mike strikes up a casual conversation with a fellow worker named George, who reveals his dissatisfaction with being a poorly paid construction laborer, constrained by his responsibilities as a married man with two children. Mike discloses his past as an MMA fighter and his fall from grace, necessitating any job to survive. George discovers Mike's true identity as a former MMA fighter, and his two children turn out to be avid fans of Mike. Homeless and down on his luck, Mike resorts to spending nights in a car parked near the Castle High Hospital building. Meanwhile, Deacon and his wife Kat keep an eye on the hospital building scheduled for demolition, planning to infiltrate it once all the construction workers have departed. As the story unfolds, George confides in Mike about his desire to move to Alaska with his family, inspiring Mike to give it some thought. While cleaning a room by himself, Mike finds a bag that eventually turns out to be Lando's secret stash of wealth from before he was imprisoned. George quickly tells Mike to leave the property after their shift ends. Mike keeps the finding of the money to himself, keeping a $10 bill for himself and hiding the rest, hoping to find it after everyone has left. Deacon readies his crew to infiltrate the Castle High Hospital building, counting on Richard's arrival, having been informed about the money's whereabouts by Lando. Donning the disguise of construction workers to evade suspicion, Deacon and his men make their move. Meanwhile, Richard prepares to head to Castle High in pursuit of the money, 
bidding his daughter farewell and explaining his pressing work commitments. While waiting in line with George for a beer, Mike informs his friend that he left his jacket at the construction site and needs to retrieve it. He hands George the $10 bill he took and hastily departs. Mike re-enters the Castle High Hospital building where the money remains concealed. He is pleasantly surprised to find it undisturbed. Instead of making a quick exit, he takes a moment to count the money, confident that no one else is aware of its presence. Simultaneously, Richard arrives at the building. One of Deacon's men spots him, alerting Deacon to his presence. Deacon and his men enter the building, with Cat resorting to violence, killing a construction worker to eliminate potential interference. Richard ascends to the sixth floor, discovering explosives intended for the building's demolition, which is scheduled in four hours. Deacon and his crew also enter the premises, arming themselves and dispersing throughout the building in search of Richard. Mike notices Richard's presence in an adjoining room, hastily returning the money to the bag and exiting. As he descends the stairs, he glimpses Deacon's men ascending and decides to re-enter the building. Richard stumbles upon a note on the floor, realizing that someone has discovered the money and taken it. Simultaneously, he hears the sound of a clanging metal, caused by Mike inadvertently kicking an iron bar. Deacon and his men, along with Richard, hear the noise and rush toward it, believing it to be Richard. Unbeknownst to all, another individual is also on the hunt for the money. Mike hides and observes Richard, who is equally evading Deacon and his gang. However, Deacon and his men are lured by the sound of an intruder in the hospital building, who turns out to be George, searching for Mike since he hasn't returned. Cat discovers a bag of money in George's pocket and wrongly assumes that George is the one who took it. Deacon and his gang interrogate George, subjecting him to torture and pressure in their quest to uncover the money's location, even though George has no knowledge of it. Mike, observing from his concealment, can do nothing to aid George. As George resolutely refuses to divulge the information they seek, Deacon orders his men to execute him. Realizing that George has met a grim end, Mike inadvertently reveals himself, disclosing his whereabouts to Deacon and his crew. Deacon issues orders for his men to apprehend Mike. Simultaneously, Mike is deeply affected by George's death and decides to avenge his friend. After concealing the money, he confronts several of Deacon's men in combat before being cornered by Cat and her henchmen. Nonetheless, Mike manages to break free and escapes through a garbage chute. Richard is present and captures Mike, brandishing a knife to coerce him into revealing the money's whereabouts. Mike, however, insists that he is merely a construction worker and has no knowledge of the money's whereabouts. Capitalizing on an opportunity, Mike attacks Richard, sparking an intense altercation that is interrupted by one of Deacon's henchmen who holds them at gunpoint. Mike and Richard manage to subdue the henchman, trying to calm him down and taking him by surprise. They inquire about the money, but more of Deacon's men start to arrive. With no other recourse, Mike and Richard make their escape. Deacon orders his men to secure the building's entrances and exits, attempting to negotiate with Mike. He offers to spare Mike's life if he surrenders the money. Mike rejects the offer and opts to take on Deacon's men. Mike finds himself trapped within the building, pursued by Deacon's men. He leaps out of a window while clutching onto curtains. Deacon and his henchmen shoot at him, prompting Mike to attempt re-entry into the building. He finds Cat inside, pointing a gun at him. Richard, mercifully, shows up and pushes Cat into the window, rendering her unconscious. Believing that Mike is by the window, Deacon and his men keep shooting until they realize that Cat was the only one shot. After learning of his wife's untimely death, Deacon promises to protect Mike and Richard as they exit the premises. Richard checks on Mike's damaged arm and asks about the money, but Mike continues to deny any knowledge. Mike and Richard once again face off against Deacon's men, successfully eliminating all of them. Mike then retrieves the hidden money and shares it with Richard. Richard suggests that Mike leave the building, but Mike initially intends to confront Deacon and his henchmen to avenge George's death. Realizing that the Castle High building is on the brink of demolition, Richard convinces Mike that Deacon and his men will meet their end in the explosion. After some contemplation, Mike agrees to escape with Richard. The mayor and other construction workers prepare to demolish the Castle High building in 15 minutes. Deacon and one of his remaining men pursue Mike and Richard as they make their escape via the building's roof. A firefight ensues with Mike taking cover and evading Deacon's gunfire. Mike urges Richard to make his escape first while he confronts Deacon alone. 
Deacon instructs his men to descend and secure the building's exit, blocking Richard's escape with the money. As Mike runs out of ammunition, he challenges Deacon to a close-range brawl. Meanwhile, Richard successfully eliminates the sole remaining henchmen and escapes in their truck. Mike eventually overpowers Deacon, seizes the money, and makes his getaway. As the Castle High Hospital building is raised, Mike, with the money in hand, leaps into Richard's truck. Deacon, still alive, endeavors to retrieve the scattered money on the roof, but the building is eventually demolished. A few days later, Mike extends financial support to George's family, helping them cope with the financial hardships stemming from his death. Subsequently, he embarks on the journey to Alaska, following George's counsel. Meanwhile, Richard fulfills Lando's request by transferring Damien to the South Block with the intention of dealing with him. He is prepared to do whatever it takes to secure the money needed for his daughter's medical treatment.